everybody, Scoutcraft here again. 1924, John Salisac invents a tool that revolutionizes the tool world. Or maybe not. Let's go check it out. Okay, today we're going to talk about one of the most useless tools I own. And I don't just own one of them, I own multiples. And because you know why? Because you can't fix stupid. That's why. So I just keep, I pick these up. I, look, these dog bone wrenches go back to the 1920s, maybe even before then. But I don't know what it is about these that when I see them, if it, you know the price is right, I pick them up. I, I've tried to use them. I brought them upstairs when I'm doing certain projects. I just, they are horrible. They're horrible wrenches. I don't know, maybe one of you people have had a uh, good experience with using these or they, they've come in handy. But everybody I've ever spoke to, we kind of laugh about it because uh, they're just, they're, they're horrible. You know, they, they don't fit it. You know, they're bulky. They don't fit in. They, they swivel. I don't know. But I have a bunch of them. And I think, believe it, as a tool collector, they're interesting and they're, attractive so i buy but they're really not great tools so that that being said let's talk about dog bone wrenches here um these here are my newest ones uh i must have picked these up in a two-pack it's probably like you know on sale or something maybe 15 dollars years ago and these are made by thorson and you can see dog bone on here and um how these work obviously they these what's interesting about the thorson is they have a detent and if you listen it locks in so that's good because sometimes if they don't have a detent you know they swivel around well so the detent is a nice feature on this also has a magnet so that you can hang it up and use it somewhere this one is metric you can see here 12 through 19 and the matching piece over here is standard and that goes 3 8 through 13 16 now again they both have the detent chrome finish uh probably made uh, most likely in china whatever so that's these now we have some vintage ones this one here you can see i picked it up 250 or somewhere um this one here is made in japan you can see here made in japan and uh this model what's interesting about this it has like a 10 degree offset you know you see there's the wrench is straight and it, it offsets to the to the here to the left there to the right and um Again, that's uh, an interesting feature. This is most likely, uh, yes, it is standard. And this one goes from 7 sixteenths to 7 eighths. So, uh, and this one here, it looks like to be a 12 point uh, socket in there. So that's interesting. And again, this here is a six point, you see? So that's a little bit different. Um, this one here, this one here, believe it or not, uh, this is a Witherby number 2770 and this one's made in Germany and you can see it here it says Germany right there so that's pretty interesting uh, what's interesting about this one there's no offset but there's a up and down offset you see like there so it, it this one here seems you know to be most interesting no detents on this one and uh, again this one here is a standard going from 5 8 to uh 1930 seconds so you see that there's not a lot of standards in how these were built as far as size goes and and uh you know what kind of wrenches they were now this is what started everything with those dog bone wrenches was the original and this one here i just picked up not too long ago and this is a um it's a handy h-a-n-d-e and uh you know that company from other done um other wrenches we restored you can see it's pat pending so they didn't have a patent yet on this. And this one here is from Mansfield, Ohio, where it was made. And um, this was the beginning. This was what started that whole dog bone wrench. And you can see this one here is like the worst kind of design you can have. However, and you don't see, when you see these, and <laughs> they are around, uh, again, these aren't worn out because usually they, uh, they weren't used too much, you know. But here uh, you could see the difference in size between the standard, the newer dog bone wrenches. So it is a little bit smaller. This coming in at about uh, just about nine inches. And again, you could see the writing here, the handy. And you can see how this works. There's a pin that's uh, affixed to the swiveling socket uh, ball and um, on both sides. So what I'd like to do 
is uh, I want to make this nice and I have a couple things in mind that I'd like to do but the first thing we're gonna have to do is take these socket heads out of there and to do that we're gonna have to separate this and and again this is a you know it's a cast piece could you, you can see the lines here and probably some you know a little forging went on I'd like to separate that without breaking it and take these out so that's going to be the thing is getting them apart without okay here's my thought process on this on trying to figure out how to separate these two now um i could hold one half in the jaw of the vice great grandpa's vice like this again whenever you're putting something in a vice you always try and put it in the center of the vice that's where you have the most uh strength so i could put it in there and then use a uh, pry bar and try and pry it from here but then i'm putting undue pressure on this socket you know and this socket is not a heavy duty socket you could see it's kind of a, a cast you know affair so that's one way the second way uh we could put the socket into the vice here like this and have this come down so that the top half is very close to here and I could use this and I'm wedging now instead of on the socket I'm wedging on the side of the vise and try and pull that up like that and uh, see if I could widen it up I have to widen both sides and then when we're finished hopefully this will widen out and then we'll use the dake to press it back together and uh, so and I'm thinking of using a little bit of heat on here just to make sure that they don't crack and uh, also because I don't worry about the paint because we're going to be uh, addressing that later so let's see what we can do that okay the heat worked really good in getting this uh, spread apart to get this out but while it's still warm I want to make sure that this goes in easy for when I'm putting it back you know and right now it, it won't fit in so what I'm doing is, um, while it's still hot, and again, not real hot, but just warm enough, I have my big Crescent 18 inch, and I'm putting it on here like this. Again, it's in the vise, and just, I'm gently working the, the teeth, the mouth, open a little bit, so that I could fit the uh, this jaw back in, and you can see here, if I just work it in, get you a little closer so you could see if I just work it in I could get one side in close the vise I can get one side in and uh, there we go so the way that is sorry about the camera work and the way that is now I could put that in the dake and squeeze it back together so but it's still coming out so I could work on it okay we have everything apart we're ready to do uh some wire brushing but just a point to make you see how i made this wide so that i can get these back in here then press it down that's just the way they probably did it at the factory the only problem is that uh if you paint this and then you squeeze it down it's going to crack the paint something to think about when you're doing the uh putting it back together so these things uh we're going to clean these up see what we can do with them now Okay, here's our post <laughs> wire brush and paint stripping evaluation. Now we got everything nice, right? Everything is just the way it came out of the forging. You know, it's all nice and shiny. The only problem is on the inside of these, you see on the inside, I'm going to have to address that to get that inside all cleaned out. And, um, and then I have to figure out what I want to do. Uh, paint like I was saying if I paint it and then we squeeze it back together that paint is going to chip what would the original designer have liked I believe he would have liked this all nice and smooth and shiny you know and then this nice and shiny and then here in here painted that's uh, that's what I think uh, maybe we'll do so let's go try that Okay, so this is uh, what the wrench looks like before we do any kind of uh, grinding or sanding. You see that? You see the, the forge marks and whatnot. And, and over here is it's getting close to what we are going to look like when it's finished. You see? And when you hold it, what a difference. That's what we're going for. Okay, we're over at the Dake, everybody's favorite. And uh, let me show you what the setup's going to be here. We have a block of wood with a hole in here. 
And uh, when this ball goes through here, we want this hole to rest in that hole. And then we're going to put the uh, another piece of plywood with another hole in it above on top. And hopefully that'll uh, press right down without any issues. So let's give that a shot. Okay, we're set up. Let's make sure we're lined up there. Bring this down slowly. Always making sure we have that in there. And okay, that's all good. Going nice and slow. We have, it's not even registering on the needle yet as far as tonnage. So uh, it is still in the slot. Push it down a little more and then we'll raise it up. Make sure that that hole is over the top. We don't want to push down on that pin there. We want that hole to be right there. So we can move that back a little. Okay. And there we are. We're right where we should be. See that spins? Okay. So it's still spinning and it's coming down a little bit. Squeeze it down some more. We don't want to make it too tight. And remember, there's always going to be a little spring back. Now, we register uh, one ton. One ton of pressure. And let's see what kind of spring back we have and if we have to do any more. Well, that looks pretty nice to me, huh? Let me see. Yeah, it looks like this side might have to come down a little. So we'll try this on the top here and give this a little bit of a push over that way and see if that brings that side down that, that tip and we're again at one ton but it don't take a lot of weight with a, with a decent press let's see that looks good let's try the other side now you know my favorite part remember what this wrench looked like before we started and we are calling this wrench finished. Uh, this is what I did to it. As you can see, I made it. You know, when, the first thing I do when I finish a wrench is I handle it. I sit there and I run it back and forth and I hold it and feel it and make sure there's no edges I missed or sharp edges or, I mean, this wrench just feels the way it should now. It's a nice wrench. Everything works, you know, really uh, smooth. I mean, it's not supposed to spin that way. Uh, you can see the handy pat applied patent applied and on this side it says uh, Mansfield, Ohio and uh, Just a little bit of red so that there's no paint. See, that's a problem with paint when you put paint on a wrench It chips off, but when it's recessed like this it won't uh, chip off. Let's give this wrench a try see how it works. Okay now uh, I Tried to use my other wrench test to believe it or not, but uh, I don't know the sizes on here are just incredibly uh, unusual I guess even here these are standard sizes again I use them for my wrench test so what you do is spin it around until you get one that should fit and then when you do just the closest I can get look at the that's not really that size but since it's a six point socket it'll work but uh, you could see how this basically works and we snugged up on that loosen it up uh, you could see it's just an awkward wrench <laughs> I don't know I gotta tell you, these things, it's a no wonder that uh, you don't see them in every toolbox today. So in closing, you're probably asking yourself, why would you spend so much time restoring a tool you don't even care about, <laughs> care for? And that's just because it is a part of uh, tool history, I guess, and I don't know. I, you know what I blame it on? I blame it on this one. That's probably one of the first, remember these? We all had these in the, as kids, if you grew up in the, the 60s or 70s, everybody had one of these. This went along with your bicycle. This was kind of a universal. This was the original dog bone wrench. And uh, one of the first ones we got, they weren't great, but uh, they had 10 different sizes they worked on, but they did work. Uh, this thing though, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the restoration. It's something interesting, something different. Thanks very much for tuning in. Have yourself a nice day. Bye-bye.